Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss glycolipids. And the learning objective of today's video are first we will see what are the glycolipids, then we will see what are the different types of glycolipids, their structure, function, and disorders associated with it. And in the end, we will see various multiple choice questions asked from this particular topic. So please watch this video till the end. So let's start. glycolipids so glycolipids they are the complex lipids which contain carbohydrate as an additional group as the name suggests glycolipids glyco means carbohydrate they are the complex lipid which contain carbohydrate as an additional group and they are basically composed of fatty acid first thing then there is a presence of alcohol in the alcohol there is a presence of sphingosine and the third there is a presence of carbohydrate so that is the basic composition of this glycolipids fine and depending upon the presence of carbohydrates they are further classified and the examples of glycolipids are cerebrocytes sulfatides globocytes and gangliosides so now we will see all these glycolipids in details so first we will study about the cerebrocytes Cerebrocytes are the glycolipids which contain glucose or galactose and depending upon the presence of glucose or galactose they are known as a glucocerebrocytes or galactocerebrocytes. The structure of this cerebrocyte as we have seen in the earlier slide as well they contain fatty acid, they contain sphingosine as an alcohol and this sphingosine and fatty acid together they are known as the ceramide and if there is a presence of glucose then it is known as a Glucocerebrocyte. If there is a presence of galactose, then it is known as the galactocerebrocyte. And if the, there is a deficiency of glucocerebrosidase enzyme, which is the enzyme required for the degradation of this glucocerebrosyte, then it causes Gorgias disease, which is an inborn act of metabolism associated with the degradation of glucocerebrosyte. So that is the disorder associated with the Glucocerebrocyte, if there is a deficiency of glucocerebrosidase enzyme, then it leads to the Gorgias disease. So that is regarding the structure and disorder associated with cerebrocytes. Now, these cerebrocytes again they are classified depending upon the type of fatty acids present in them. So the first one is the kerosene, which contains lignoceric acid. Then second one is the cerebron which contains cerebronic acid. Third one is the nervon which contains nervonic acid. And the fourth one is oxynervon which contains hydroxy derivative of the nervonic acid. So this is the further classification of cerebrocytes depending on the presence of fatty acids. And the examples are kerosene, cerebron, nervon and oxynervon. Now occurrence and functions of cerebrocytes. So cerebrocytes, they are the components of the white matter of the brain and they are also present in the myelin sheath of the brain. And they are, also, they are also important constituents of the cell. So that is the occurrence and function of cerebrocytes. And we have already seen Gorgias disease is an inborn error of glucocerebrocyte degradation due to the inherited deficiency of glucocerebrocytes, which is a lysosomal that is regarding the cerebrocyte. First, glycolipid. Second glycolipid is the sulfatides. Okay? First, we will see the structure of sulfatides. So, as the name suggests, sulfatides, they contain sulfate as an additional group. Fine. So, they contain fatty acid, sphingosine as alcohol, then there is the presence of galacto, gal galactose, and they contain sulfate as an additional group. So, that is the structure of Sulfatides. And if there is a deficiency of sulfatidase enzyme, which is also known as the paral sulfatase, then it leads to one disorder which is known as a metachromatic leukodystrophy, which is also known as the sulfatide lipidosis. Fine, so that is regarding the structure and disorder associated with the sulfatides. Now we will see the occurrence and function of sulfatides. So sulfatides is basically seen in the white matter of the brain. And disorder we have already seen that is metachromatic leukodystrophy, which occurs due to the deficiency of sulfatidase or aryl sulfatase enzyme. 
time, which is the enzyme required for the degradation of this sulfate gas. So that is the second glycolipid. Third glycolipid is the globosides. So now again we will see the structure of globosides. So the composition of globo globoside is the fatty acid, then there is a presence of sphingosine as an alcohol and it contains different sugar units. Fine, it contains different sugar units. So that is the structure of globosides. Now we will see the occurrence and function of globosides. So globosides are basically present on the outer surface of the RBCs. Fine. And this structure of globosides, it will determine the blood group antigenicity. Different globosides will be present on the blood group A, B and O. So that is regarding the occurrence and function. It plays important role in the determinants of the blood group antigenicity. So that is the globosides. Now the disorder associated with the globoside is the Sandoff's disease. And it is the Sandoff's disease which occurs due to the deficiency of hexosaminidase B enzyme. Fine. Hexosaminidase B. Fine. Remember this hexosaminidase B. If there is a deficiency of this enzyme, then it leads to the inborn error of metabolism associated with the globosides, which is known as the Sandoff's disease. Now, the fourth and last glycolipid is the ganglioside's. Fine. So, ganglioside's are the glycolipids which contain an acetyl neuraminic acid, which is also known as the sialic acid. Fine. So, ganglioside contains sialic acid, which is known as the an acetyl neuraminic acid. Now we will see the types and nomenclature of this ganglioside. So ganglioside contain fatty acid, sphingosine as an alcohol, they contain monosaccharide, they contain minosugars and they contain sialic acid. And if nomenclature includes the uh, ganglioside following, so G stands for the ganglioside and M and B stands for the sialic acid residue. If there is a presence of M then it contains one sialic acid residue and if there is a presence of B, that means it contains two sialic acid residue. Fine. So, examples of ganglioside are the GM1, GM2 and GM3. Fine. So, G stands for the ganglioside and M stands for it contains single sialic acid residue. And 1, 2 and 3 stands for the, it indicate the type of the monosaccharide units present based on their chromatographic separation. So this is the picture showing the structure of ganglioside. Fine. Fatty acid, sphingosine, it contains sialic acid, it contains monosaccharide units and it contains amino sugars. So this is the structure of GM1 ganglioside. So G stands for ganglioside, M stands for monosialic acid residues and 1 stands for the chromatographic separation of the monosaccharide units. This is the structure of GM2 ganglioside and this is the structure of GM3 ganglioside. That is regarding the structure and nomenclature of ganglioides. Now we will see the occurrence and function and disorders associated with the ganglioside. So these ganglioides are mainly present in the cell membranes. They are richly present in the gray matter and they provide the receptor for the function of hormones as well as for the bacterial toxins. And the GM1 ganglioside it serves as a receptor for the cholera toxin which is secreted from the Vibrio cholerae, which causes the cholera. Fine. And this particular question was asked in a NEAT PG 2022 exam. So the GM1 ganglioside serves as a receptor for the cholera toxin. Remember this thing. Fine. So that is regarding the occurrence and function of ganglioside. Now the disorder associated with the ganglioside is the tay sachs disease, which occurs due to the deficiency of hexosaminidase A enzyme. Remember over here, there is a hexosaminidase A. If there is a hexosaminidase B, then it causes the Sandoff's disease, which is associated with the globocytes. Right? So that is regarding the glycolipids. Now we will see the multiple choice question. The first question is, Nana, that is an acetyl neuraminic acid is present in. The options are cerebrocytes, ganglioides, ether lipids and all of them. So the n acetyl neuraminic acid, which is also known as the sialic acid, is present in the ganglioides. Fine. So the correct answer is B. Second question is, which of the following glycolipid is known to be the receptor in human intestine for the cholera toxin? GM1, GM3, globoside and cerebrocyte. So just we have discussed that GM1 ganglioside, which is a glycolipid, is known to be the receptor in human intestine for the cholera toxin. The correct answer is A. 
third and last question is which of the following carbohydrates distinguishes gangliosides from a glucoside the options are glucose nana anacetyl galactosamine and galactose the carbohydrate which distinguishes gangliosides from the glucoside is the sialic acid which is also known as the anacetyl neuraminic acid so the correct answer is b so that is all about glycolipids thank you for watching thank you